Hi, this is Ira Gorlick, and this is part six of my discussions about spontaneous order. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the second problem I have with the concept of spontaneous order. Finding the precise boundary between spontaneous and constructed order is way too difficult at the micro level, rendering any actionable distinction impossible. Hayek recognized that spontaneous orders generally include or are made up of constructed elements. A spontaneous order, he wrote, is a process in the course of which spontaneous growth of customs and deliberate improvements of the particulars of any existing system have constantly interacted. So going back to my picture of, uh, of the people walking on the street, that is absolutely an example of spontaneous order. But that order is built on a bunch of constructed order in terms of how people interact. And, and again, I use the example, if, the, if there was a king and he was going down the street, people would have to make way for him. So it is really, you know, at, at, at the grand, at the, at the macro level, I get it. You know, constructed order is Obamacare. Somebody, um, you know, somebody sat down and said, this is what Obamacare is. Or constructed order is the Ten Commandments or the Bible, or constructed order is, is um, the way Udemy sets up these classes. But at the micro level, it, it's impossible to know where constructed order start, stops and where spontaneous order starts. And, and here I use this example, and this actually, uh, the University of Maryland, um, it, when we did a tour where my daughter was looking at colleges there, uh, worked this way. So consider an example of an architect designing a college campus who wants to decide where to put the sidewalks between the buildings. The constructivist solution is to draw the lines where the students ought to walk and put the sidewalks there. But a Heikian advises the architect to wait a year to see where students choose to walk and then put the sidewalks there, products of a spontaneous order. That makes perfect sense, and in fact, that's the way they did it at the Quad at University of Maryland. Which is why if you go to the University of Maryland, the, the sidewalks are all over the place. The architect takes this advice, but a year later when he goes to install the sidewalks, he meets his hiking and friend again who urges him to stop and wait another year. Well, things might have changed. Uh, different classes may have gained popularity. After all, the student body has changed in the interim, rooms have been reassigned, and various other factors have reordered the students' preferences. To put in the sidewalks now would be, a handicap, would be to handicap the dynamic, ever-changing spontaneous order. Every year he has met with the same advice. Spontaneous orders always evolve, and whenever anyone tries to implement a discovered rule, the same objection applies. Of course, Hayek recognized that discovered rules must eventually be implemented, but as we'll see, his response to this creates even more problems. Hayek seems to argue that lawyers and economists ought only to aim at improving the process of spontaneous order rather than focusing on the results. And, and this is actually a very interesting idea here, and I, I think we need to explore it more. We can preserve an order of such complexity not by the method of directing the members, but only indirectly by enforcing and improving the rules conducive to the formation of a spontaneous order. So what he's saying here, and I think it makes perfect sense and why I like Hayek and why I'm a fan of spontaneous order in general at the macro level, is that we're really looking at, at trying to be flexible with the way the, the order is created. And in some cases, it might be a constructed order. In some cases, it might be a spontaneous order. But don't discount either of the two. But everything is conducive to the formation of a spontaneous order in one way or another, including coercive institutions. The many accountants who make a living helping people, people fill out tax forms are a testament to this. As I've said before, Biological evolution is a spontaneous order process, but it cannot tell any particular lion whether to eat any particular antelope, because either way, that choice is incorporated into the process of evolution. Likewise, spontaneous order can give us no guidance about whether any particular rationally constructed plan should or should not be implemented. All right, so I'm going to go into one more problem with spontaneous order in the next lecture. Thanks.